Hello and welcome back to Mark's house and garden. The other day I found some toad spawn in my wildlife pond. It's right there, right in front of my eyes. And when I posted a video about it, it started a conversation about what will happen to that toad spawn if I leave it in situ. And the outcome of that conversation between Vic Face and uh, Jude Picton and Muddy Boots was that it will probably get eaten. And I was fine with that because I was thinking, well, that's what happens in nature, so don't intervene. But the fact is, I've already intervened in nature by creating a wildlife pond in the corner of my garden. So I think that gives me license and permission to intervene. So I've gone and bought this little terrarium. I'm going to take a small section of that toad spawn, not all of it, I'll leave a lot of it in situ and nature can take its course, but I'm going to collect some of it and keep it in this little terrarium. I bought that off Amazon. I'll put a link to it in the description box below this video. It was only seven pounds. What I like about it is it's waterproof. It will hold water at the bottom. And what the lid will prevent frogs, toads, newts and birds from getting in and eating uh, the toad spawn inside. But it's got lots of air vents here. So I imagine that that uh, toad spawn will need oxygenated water to live in so the oxygen in the air can get to the surface of the water. I intend, once I've collected some of the toad spawn, just keeping it here at the edge of the pond where it will stay at the same temperature as the uh, the pond itself. I was worried about it being in direct sunlight and overheating but in actual fact that's what will happen to that lump of uh, toad spawn so why should this toad spawn be any different? And then I will observe what happens to the toad spawn in this terrarium. <laughs> Hopefully it will hatch into toad poles and we can watch them grow in here and then eventually I'll release them into the pond. So there we go. I'll probably do a little time-lapse video on these growing and maturing. I may even find out what toad spawn eats and keep a couple until it uh, grows into little toadlets. So the time has now come for me to get into the water and try and gather a little piece of that toad spawn. Now, before I gather some up, allow me to show it to you in situ. As you can see there, it's like a long string. And I say string, it's almost as thick as a small piece of rope. And it's full of thousands of little black dots. And those black dots are the individual toad spawns. And that is what I'm going to gather up in my terrarium. You can tell the difference between toad spawn and frog spawn because frog spawn is one great lump of jelly with hundreds of black dots whereas this is a string and newts they lay their eggs on a leaf and fold the leaf up and they lay individual eggs and I have found both toads and newts in this pond which has only been here since last June so it's only about nine months old and there are videos about the newts on my channel. You can see them at the end of this one. So there's the toad spawn, which I will now be gathering. Now, before I venture into the water, I'm going to take the lid off this and give it a bit of a wash because it's plastic and it's probably come from a factory somewhere. So it may well be covered in chemicals. So we'll just, I'll take the glove off. We'll just give that a good rinse in that water so that any surplus chemicals will be washed off. There we go. That's nice and clean. Now, I have to try and get in there carefully without going above the depth of my wellies and scoop up a little bit of that toad spawn. So how deep can we go without... I wonder if I can reach across. I can reach. I can reach with my arm. I don't want to do a You've Been Framed video where I end up on television being laughed at. So there we go. I've got some there, so let's just sort of divide it off with some of this green slime. Leave the rest in situ. I shall fill that up. Don't worry, I'm going to be bringing this closer to the camera in a minute so you can have a good look at it. 
<sighs> I'm sure I've got some. Yes, I've definitely got some in there. So let's get back out of the water and have a closer look. And so there is our toad spawn in our little miniature terrarium. I don't want to contaminate it. My hands have just been washed in the water, so they shouldn't really have any soap on them, but there is the toad spawn. You can see it's like a long string going along and I've collected some of that blanket weed, which was actually laid onto. And I'm probably going to just get some of that duck weed from down there and put a bit of that in to just to cover the surface. And maybe a couple of those leaves that can go in as well. And that will be the basis of our experiment. That is going to have the lid placed on top of it, which we'll try and do now one-handed, as I'm holding the camera in the other hand. And we'll make sure that's nice and secure. It's got a nice handle on it. And we'll place that into the water's edge down here. We can see it there, look, if you look closely. There is the toad spawn inside that little miniature terrarium. I'm going to try and put this at a slight angle so that the water within the pond can circulate through. So that is now nicely wedged between two boulders where the water can lap through and oxygenate it. And I can access it by lifting it up with this little handle and I'll keep you updated on how that turns out. I'll see you soon for some more wildlife pond amphibian adventures. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.